Hello and welcome back to my channel. My hair is not cooperating with me today, much like every other day, so I will just leave it on this side of my head. All right, today I am going to be showing you a upper body cardio slash core workout, which might sound like a lot of things in a workout, but I promise you it will all make sense when we do it. So when I do my upper body workouts, I don't like to just do like bench press, shoulder press, dumbbell curls. When I say those exercises in my head, that's literally the voice that I use. But I don't like to do my upper body workouts like that because A, I find them to be kind of boring, like it's very, it's a very slow moving workout. And B, because I just don't sweat as much and I love to sweat, as you all know. So when I do my upper body workouts, I do a lot of like functional movements. So like chin-ups, push-ups, a lot of body weight exercises. And then I'll add in like high intensity moves, whether it's mount climbers or like plank kick throws or whatever it is. So my upper body workouts are usually pretty fun, pretty sweaty, and I get them over within like 45 minutes or so. So for today's workout, I'm also going to be working with Reebok. They sent me over one of their latest sneakers, uh, which is the new Speed TR shoe. The thing that I like the most about the sneaker is how functional and versatile it is, as you can hear. That's got a pretty solid heel right there. I don't know what kind of sneakers you like to lift weights in, but when I do exercises like deadlifts or squats, I like to have a solid heel in the shoe to give me more support. So I really like that about the shoe. And also this is its pretty flexible, as you can see. It's got a lot of give to it. So it also is a really good shoe for any running, cardio exercise, any mountain climbers, any lateral jumps. So I've been wearing this shoe a lot recently and it's called the Speed TR and it's the latest one that has just come out. And it's pretty cute. As you can see, it has this dotted detailing around the shoe as well. So yeah, I'm gonna be wearing these as I just hit myself in the chest with them. Other than that, there's not much else I have to say. So are you guys ready for the workout? To get your heart rate pumping? To get those biceps burning? I'm gonna end this right now. I will see you at the gym. So before every workout, I always try to do five minutes either on the spin bike or on the treadmill. Here, I'm just doing five minutes on the bike and then I'm getting into some shoulder mobility exercises. So the first one I'm doing are these scapula protraction push-ups, I guess I would call it. I'm just doing this exercise to really strengthen my shoulders and my upper back and just get them warmed up and a little bit more mobile. The second exercise I'm going into, you'll need a band and you're laying on the ground. You're lifting your chest nice and high off the ground as much as you can, bringing your hands in front of you, arms straight, and then bring them back over your head and behind you. The final exercise, you're gonna keep that band, you're gonna loop it around your feet and you're going to loop the band around your thumbs just like I am in this video. Keep your arms nice and straight as you bring the band up and over your head. You should feel this in the back of your shoulders in your rear delts. For all three of these exercises, I try to go for two sets of 10 reps. All right, so let's get into the workout. The first exercise you're going to be doing, you're going to do a walk out into a push up. You're going to do one push up, walk your hands back to your feet. Don't stand up all the way. You're gonna keep your hands on the ground. You're gonna walk out and go into two push ups. You're going to do this until you make your way all the way up to 10 push ups. So, yes, you do need to be super warmed up before you get into this. Take breaks as you need. I'm not expecting you to do 10 push-ups all the way in a row. I'm pretty sure I got to six push-ups the first time, then I got up to eight, and then I finished off nine and 10 and almost died, but I made it through. Do what you can. If you need to drop down to your knees, that's completely fine. Just add one push-up every time until you get to 10. Okay, once you've gotten to your 10 push-ups, you can take a break, but not too long of a break because we're going into a somewhat similar exercise except this time we're working on our triceps rather than our chest. So grab a bench, you're going to be doing incline push-ups. It's the exact same format, except this time your elbows are going to be tight to your body and your hands are on a bench rather than on the floor. If you need to, of course you can drop down to your knees and just do the push-ups like that. But remember, we're using our triceps this time. Do one tricep push-up and then walk your feet in and out like I am here just to give yourself a little break. Next, you're gonna go into two push-ups, take a little break, 
three push-ups all the way up to 10 again. Like I said for the last one, take breaks as you need. I took breaks again. I think I stopped three times before I got all 10 out. And if you have to, go down to your knees. All right, enough push-ups. Let's get into the actual workout itself. Not that that wasn't a workout, but this is now the circuit part of the workout. Okay, so there are six exercises in this circuit. You're going to be doing each one for 45 seconds on 15 second rest. The first one is a seated curl to shoulder press. So grab a pair of dumbbells and sit on the edge of a bench. You're going to curl the dumbbells up to your shoulders, turn your palms out and then press up using your shoulders. Keep that core nice and tight and don't let your lower back arch. You wanna stay in a nice, strong, flat line. Go for 45 seconds curling and pressing until the time is up. The second exercise you're going to go into is a little bit of a higher intensity. You're going to grab a mini band, not one that's very high in resistance. Go for a lighter band this time. You're going to wrap it around your wrists. You're going to jump in and out with your feet, just like a jumping jack, except your arms are going to be straight out in front of you. As you jump your feet out, jump your arms out at the same time, pushing those wrists against the band. Go for 45 seconds, your delts will be burning here, but just keep on going. If you have to stop, your shoulders are burning too hard, keep those feet moving, take a break for a second or two with your arms, and then go again. You can also move the band up closer towards your elbow to make it a little bit easier. All right, whew. We're done with the arms for now, we're going to move on to an ab exercise. So you're going to be doing these hollow rocks. Extend your legs and extend your arms above your head. Press your lower back flat into the mat as much as you can and contract those abs while keeping your chin tucked. Lift your arms and shoulders off the ground as well as your feet. You're going to rock back and forth, minimizing any movement from your hips or your shoulders. Try to keep your arms and your hands past your ears. I can even see in this video that I'm bringing my arms a little bit too forward, so that's something I'm going to work on next time. If this exercise is too difficult for you, you can just hold in the hollow hold position with your legs and arms extended without rocking back and forth. And of course, you can modify this again by bending your legs at a 90 degree angle. Try all variations, see what works best for you. You might have to hold the position at first and then work your way up to the rocking movements. The fourth exercise you're going to be doing are tricep dips, except you're not just going straight up and down. You're going to be counting three seconds on the eccentric part and then pushing up for one. So place your hands on the bench, arms fully extended. Come down for three, two, one, and then push up. Try to keep your back as close to the bench as you can, coming down to a perfect 90 degree angle, engaging your triceps the entire time throughout this exercise. Try to keep your elbows pointed back as much as possible, not letting them flare out to the sides. Go for 45 seconds and then take a break. Guys, we are almost done. We have two exercises left. Yes, two exercises. Okay, so for this one, you'll need a bench as well. You're going to be putting your feet up on it while your hands are on the ground. So you're in a decline plank position. Keep that core nice and tight, butt down, back flat. You're going to release your right foot from the bench, drop your right hip and kick it through, passing underneath that left leg. You should feel this almost immediately in your obliques on that side. Put your foot back on the bench and repeat on the opposite leg. As you kick your leg through, straighten your leg as much as you can, really engaging those obliques. If you've never done this exercise before and it's too challenging for you, no worries. This was a pretty tough exercise for me too. Come down to the ground in a high plank position. Repeat the same movement, except this time you won't have to drop your hips as much. Keep going side to side, trying to extend that leg as much as possible. I have one more regression for you. If you're not able to extend that leg fully, then perform the exercise, but this time keeping a bend in the leg as you kick it through. With all three of these variations, you should definitely feel your obliques firing by the end of it. Okay, you've made it to the last exercise of the circuit. Exercise number six. We are doing alternating upright rows with dumbbells, except with a little bit of a twist. So you're not going up and down with both arms. While one arm works, the other arm is up at the top, holding that movement, burning out those shoulders. So stand nice and tall, core tight. You're gonna bring your elbows up, bring the dumbbells to collarbone height. Release one arm, bring the dumbbell down towards your hips, and then back up. Hold that right arm there and repeat the same on the opposite side. You should definitely feel this in the top and back of your shoulders. 
Once you've done 45 seconds of this, you are finished the first round of the circuit. Congratulations. Rest for one to two minutes, depending on how long you need to recover, and then you're repeating the circuit for two more times. And I'm sure you thought I was done, but unfortunately I'm not. I wanted to give these Reebok kicks one last push just to see how well they stood up. So I'm making us do three minutes of burpees to burn us out. Yes, you heard me, three minutes. I'm pretty sure everyone by this point knows how to do a burpee, but if you need reminding, you're jumping up as high as you can go, jumping back down, hands on the ground, bring your chest down to the floor, jump those feet back in and jumping back up. You're going for three minutes. You're gonna try and get as many reps as you can in. I was pretty tired by this point as I'm sure you will be too, but if I counted correctly, I think I got to 55 burpees. Okay, I just finished that with three minutes of burpees. It sounds harder than it actually is. Because you're not doing a push-up, you're just trying to get in as many as you can, which actually does sound kind of hard. But I promise it's a great end to your workout. So anyway, I hope that you guys like that workout. Obviously, you can see I did um, some free weights with the dumbbells, got some high-intensity exercises in there with the banded jacks, which are complete shoulder killers. And I'm pretty tired, so I'm gonna end this here. Hope you guys enjoyed the workout. Let me know what you think in the comments. Bye. Bye.